Hello and good day to you. Today's video will be designing and then knitting a patchwork blanket for a double bed using the designer knit software Inkscape Inkscape graphics software and the Brother KH950i electronic knitting machine. The Brother KH50i is an electronic knitting machine, but we'll be using it just like a manual knitting machine. We'll be using the electronic part of it. Inkscape is a free graphic software. And uh, if you are, you can use any graphic software of your choice. But if you don't, um, you don't know how to use a graphic software. You can get pieces of card or cardstock in the colors of the yarn that you desire, and you just arrange it. Follow the instructions on how we arrange it to arrange um. Uh, how we designed it in um, Inkscape and you'll be good. To design our blanket for the double bed, I've already measured my double bed and um, all the size of the blanket I desire for the width, the height, including the drops I need for the blanket. If I want to tuck it under the bed, if I want it to just fall down, on the side or just drop down by the side of the bed I've already measured what I desire so to design our blanket we'll go to we'll be using original pattern drafting this is a complete version of designer needs software so if you don't have the original pattern drafting in yours in your version you can watch um the demo I did for I called baby blanket designing it using standard dummy styling and you can use that um, technique to design it. just watch what we do in original pattern drafting and you do that in standard garment styling so that your garment in standard garment styling is not split into two that you just have what you desire All right. so click on original pattern drafting a window pops up. We'll go to piece and block new piece. It tells us we want to use the default tension or enter a new tension. You can use the default tension and then change, but I have my tension here with me, so I'm just going to click on enter new tension, click on OK. The tension for the knitting machine I'm using is 12.5 for 12.5 for 40 stitches in centimeters. Why the height of 60 rows is 13.5? Um, I'll do same for the cuff and welds, although I don't need that, but I'll just do it. And I'm using tension. Seven on the knitting machine, and it's the brother. Let me put brother KH 950i. Okay, and um, it's 100% acrylic yarn. I'll be using 100% acrylic yarn. I think I'll just leave that every other information that's all right you can put any information you desire is stocking it and um, I'm knitting it in simply stocking it you can put any information you desire. so I just leave that and click on OK for this piece we'll call it square because we did um, we we'll call it the square because we need for the patchwork blanket we're going to make squares which we need into panels and make different panels which 
will join together to make a very large blanket. Okay, so here's a square. And uh, uh, before I, um, I chose the size I want my square to be. And I've decided that 26.9 centimeters for my square is all right. If you don't have, you can just use your ruler, make some points, and see if you like that size of square. You can even cut a piece of paper to that size of square and place it if you like it, or you use quilting ruler, just measure what you like. So for this, 26.9 centimeter, centimeters is all right for my square, and I'm going to go with that. I'll click on fit to width icon here. To make sure this square fit to that the width of uh, to my measurement. Here the square is 40 centimeter, but I'm going to change it to 26.9. Now it's looking like a rectangle. So I need to click on fit to length to make it a perfect square and change that to 26.9. So whatever measurement you have, you, you can put it there. So now I have my square between 26.9 centimeters. If you want to measure in inches, go to measure, sorry, option, unit of measurement, and click on inches. Then you click OK. If we see it in inches, it's 10.5906 inches. So our square is 10.5906 inches. You can see, check the width to make sure it's perfect. 10.5906. I'll go back to option, unit of measurement, and come back to centimeters, which I'm using. So, depending on the measurement you're using, just click that. And now we have our square. We need to make our panels. And to make a pa our panel, we'll go to piece, block new piece, and we'll call that, we'll name that panel. And click on OK. Centralize it, okay. So this our panel, the one with the gray. We need to fit our panel to the width of the square, and we need to make it um, very long. With that, let's fit it to the width of the square first. So our panel is, inactiva is activated. We'll click on fit to width. And the width of our square is 26.9 centimeters. So that's all right for our panel. So our panel is 26.9 centimeters in width. But we need, we need to know how many squares we're going to use to make a panel. With that, we we'll need our calculator. Sorry, I just want to make space for my calculator to come up without covering the work. Because we have the total length of the blanket we need, we're going to divide that. The total length of blanket for me is 292 centimeters. So I'm going to divide that by 26. 0.9 centimeters for the square. So now, know how many squares will give me? We go in to make my the panel for my blanket so that I can get a very this um high. So I'll divide it by 26.9 centimeters. Okay, just 26.9, and it's giving me 10.85 and some other numbers. I'll approximate this. I don't want this figure to just go off like that because I'm going to make my blanket smaller. So what I'm going to do next is just to approximate this to a whole number, which is 11. That means instead of 10.8, I'll have 11. Which means I need 11 square to make my um, panel. My panel is going to be a height... Um, going to be made up of 11 squares so the next uh, after this, I'm just going to say 11 times my the num 
times the height of my square, which is 26.9. But I need 11 squares and the height of my square, uh, of my square, and it's going to give me 295.6. Oh, sorry, 295.9. With that, I'll fit the width of my blanket of this panel now to 295.9 centimeters. Let's zoom it. Okay. Now you can see that the panel, this star panel, which is going to be made up of 11 squares, and it's now properly fit. So I activate this square. And put on top of the panel, and you will see that the square fits properly the same width. Because the panel, each panel is going to be the width of a square. The squares are going to be made up of, of the panel is going to be made up of squares of different colors. That's not all. We need to know how many panels we're going to make because one panel is not going to be enough to co cover our double bed. We want to know how many panels we'll make to we need to make so what we do we just need our calculator not much and i'll put the total width of the blanket is 215 centimeters And I'm going to divide that by the square, the size of my square, the width of my square, which is 26.9. And that's giving me 7.9 and some other numbers. I don't want this um, 9 after the decimal to go to waste. So instead, I'm going to approximate to 8. So that it becomes a whole number. That means I'll need 8 panels. To get the width of my blanket, let me just multiply it by eight and see. Okay, this is not this is the size of my square times eight means that my width will now be two point two hundred and fifteen point two centimeter. That's all right. With what we've done now, we now have we know that we're going to need eight panels. To make the width of the blanket and each panel will consist of 11 squares we'll, go, we'll need to save our work so i'll click on file save us and i'll call it a spring i have one already here okay now let me call this one um spring Patchwork Knit me a blanket and I'll say double bed. <laughs> I'll click save. So now we've we have our Blanket. I'll just go to original pattern drafting. Sorry, I said interactive knitting. I'll click on the interactive knitting icon because I'm going to make one of the squares in my design. I want to make one of the squares. Um, I want to make it stripe. So I want to know how many rows that I need to make this. Um, to, uh, that the one square is going to be so that I make sure the stripe. I'm designing fits properly into the square. So I'll go to interactive knitting. Spring patchwork knit me quilt. That is it. I'll click on OK. I'm going to click on the square. I want the square. And we just click on OK. This arrow, arrow going up with the horizontal bar takes us to the last row to knit for the square. So that's what I'll just click on means that each square will, will be made up of 120 rows. I'll need to need 120 rows for each square. And I'll cast on left needle 
43 to right needle 43. That's fine. Let me just take a look. I'm being inquisitive. Let me just select, click select piece and go to panel. And for the panel, I'll go to this horizontal row, sorry, horizontal, this arrow with the horizontal bar going up. This arrow going up with the horizontal bar, which takes me to the last row to me. And I'm going to be meeting, when my row count goes to 1,316, means that I've finished that panel. So, for each panel, it's made up of 1,316 rows. Okay, let me go back to select piece and leave it on the screen first. So, this is our design. The next stage is to go to the graphic software. So, I'm using Inkscape, as I said earlier. It's a free graphic software. Click on the Inkscape program. Select um, Create Rectangles and Square. We just draw a square. Oh, mine don't have colors because of the last um, time. So if you, there's no color, just click on any of the colors to select that color. Then we go to the measurement. I work in centimeters. You don't need to do this if you don't want to. But not to confuse you, I'm going to do. Um, make the measurement exactly that of the square that we're working with so i make it 29.9 sorry 26.9 centimeters i'll do same for the width so that it gives me a perfect square i just want to zoom out so because i'm going to duplicate you right activate the square that i select the square to right click on the mouse and it duplicates you see a uh, menu and you do see and you just duplicate so i right click see on the menu duplicate click on it and then you drag out make sure you select so now we have the four color we have um four squares i'm going to select them each square and fill them in a the color of um, choice that the column will be using for the for the um blanket I'll go for purple because I'll be using purple, that shade of purple. Rosebud pink. I'll go for green, apple green. Let me take this one if it's close. No, it's just not close to me. You can use any one. Okay, I think that's it. Then I'll go for yellow. Oh, let me take this one. That's nice. Okay, these are the four colors I'll be working with. So I'll just duplicate again because I don't I love in case I make mistake with this, I can have my original there. I'll work with these four duplicated ones. What I want to do next is to okay, I can see duplicate this one. Let me duplicate again and work with this because um, I want to make a stripe. In the pattern that I visioned, I want to make a stripe using these four colors. So I'm going to add this. This I'll just bring it close. Yellow, then the yellow will be on top. So we are trying to make a panel. And if you know, if you remember, when we are designing. This is how we're going to steal it our panel. When we are designing, um, how many? Sorry, let me just uh, arrange it properly. Okay. So when we are designing the blanket, you know, um, it's going to be 120 rows for each um, square. We're going to need each square with all. Um, the square is going to be made up of 120 rows. And uh, I want to need each color, 10 rows of each color. So I'm going to duplicate this about four times, which will give me 120 if I multiply it by 10. Okay. 
I'll just zoom out so that you can see my work surface. Okay, I think uh, that's fine. Let me move it down a bit. Okay, then I work. So this is how our panel is going to be. Just one panel like this, that's how you need. Then you need about eight of them to make a blanket. When you select this panel that I've made, I want to make, you know, I said I want to make it dry. And if you count one, two, oh, I've moved it, sorry, edit, undo move. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And um, times ten, ten rows of each color is going to give me 120 rows, which is 120 to make our square. If you we'll go back to design and you see that. So now I've selected the oh what happened okay it's quite okay I've selected um, the panel I'm going to make sure it reads the same as the square 20.9 20 the height everything is going to make sure it reads the same I think I didn't move I moved one two out so I've resized it by just putting the size I want it for, to be for the height and the width that's the, part, um, the size of our square. And here we have it. One of them moved out too much. So I'm going to move it a bit in. It's not really necessary because um, it's not um, graphic design that I want to line up properly. I just want to arrange something and then go and knit it up. All right, so this uh we've already uh, this how the sequence of our um of the stripe is going to be. I'll select it and make sure you see the width here is the same, the height here is the same. So I'll go to object and I'll go to group. Then it's time to start arranging. Now I have um, the stripe for my stripe. This, these are now what I'll be working with. Let me see the fab. <laughs> Let me see the pattern, the fabric to make my pattern. Okay. These are my blocks. In quilt, we say blocks, right? Okay. Then we, I'll start arranging. I love duplicating. <laughs> Don't mind me. It's just me. I'm just trying to. So I'll move this one out of the way so that I'll have some originals in case I mess up, <laughs> in case I make some mistakes. I'm starting the first block with um, tribe. Then if you look at the sequence, let me zoom in so I see it. If you look at the sequence, you see that after the purple is the green, then the rosebud pink, and then the yellow. And we finished with a yellow here. So the next big block I'm going to make is going to be purple. That's how I want it to be. You can play with it the way you want yours to be. So I'm going to put purple here. And the next is going to be green. And then the rosebud pink. And here we go with the yellow. And if you count, we have just um, five blocks now. But we need about 11. We need 11 blocks to make our... We need 11 blocks to make our um, panel. So I'm going to just duplicate this and line it up here. I want you to see my full work surface. So I'm going to... And now we have um, 10 blocks, sorry. I didn't click out. So we have 10 blocks now. 5 and 5. We need to um, put the 11th block. And here's the 11th block. So the color I start with, um, the block I start with is the block I'm ending with. So that's nice. Alright, so that's, this is our first panel. I'm just going to group, select all of them. I'm not grouping yet. I duplicate because I have to move. Then we have the second panel. 
if I want to, I can just put it side by side. I can just put it and continue like that. You can make each panel the same um, sequence of color, color sequence, but I'm not doing that. Instead, the next color sequence is going to be from green. Going to delete this one off, and then I'll put um, the colors that needs to go. I'll just duplicate it. Select those to color duplicate, and this if you can't just if you can't do that from in between because you're scared you're going to move your work. Then you have these ones over here which you can duplicate and now work with. That's why I love duplicating. So, so that in case of any. Let me group this one. The first 10 panel. I'll just select only that panel and group. Then we can move this one close to it if you want to. But I like I want to separate them first. Then we'll move them later. So I'll put this one here. I mistakenly group this, so I'll just ungroup. Okay, so this is going to be the next panel. And um, select. So it's as if I'm missing two. Okay, I just love playing around with my blocks. You can, you are the designer, you can do what you want. So the next one, if this one is yellow, the next one is going to be. Okay, with purple started with green. The next one, oh, it's supposed to be okay. We can go in any sequence color we like. Let me just group this one and I'll see how I would like to play with them. Then let me put this one as um, no pitch, it's too, cl it's too close. I don't like it close, so I'm gonna bring this one back. I don't want the colors to be closed. I want to be like all those um, games, Sudoku also, that you, you don't have to have the same colors on the on the rows, okay? Or oh, sorry, on the horizontals. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm trying to do with this. Um, okay, then this one should be from here. Purple is close to this. Let's see. We just keep on playing, then we can play around and decide which one we want. I'm going to go for. After pink is purple. Purple green. So to be purple. Oh, sorry. It's going to be stripe and purple, so yeah, it's going to be stripe and purple. Subject so group. I think I've grouped this one. I've grouped this one. So you can make your blocks the way you want to, and then you can plan how you're going to go to object and ungroup and basically group this and I not on on this panel. So I'll go to this. So I'm starting the other row from um, from rosebud pink. Now we have uh, five rows. Now we have five rows. You can see uh, five five rows, all repeating the colors in a very nice pattern. If you well, normally we want to need ten. Um, sorry, eight rows because that's going to make uh, for the blanket. That's going to fit in our into our blanket. Best. So it's going to be close. So this one goes next because that's going to be close. So 
So if we take this like this, you can see that each color they, they have kind of distance from each other. They're not that close, nothing. So you just select all, drag your um the cursor around it to select it, and to duplicate, you right click to duplicate, and then we have it like that. So now we have about ten panels now. If you want to make more, you can make more, and you can decide to make your the width of your sorry this square each of the square you can decide to make the squares larger so that your panel you can finish your blanket quickly i think i have one like that that i've done and this one okay so to save our work i love saving my work quickly you can go next time and alter it if you save it in xvg which is scalable vector graphics you can go next time to alter it because it's going to open this file for you and then you can go change the colors maybe next time you want to make it for some want to make for someone you can see me make another one yeah you can just make another kind of work here if you desire so first we'll save it test before we export so let's save us um your window pop up i'll call it spring spring patchwork knit me a blanket chart i have one already so i'll call this um two So I've saved it as two. Um, I've saved my work. Then to export, you can just select all like this and group. Object group is not necessary. You can just put, but you must select the work you want to export. If you want to resize it to a smaller shape, you can still resize from here by clicking on it. Um, press your control key on the um, keyboard and then drag then it will just make it smaller it then it will just make it then it will make it smaller if not if you put on if, if you stay drag it might distort your shape by making one side big or small one side big and the other one small let me duplicate this one if you press your shift key down and you drag, is one side is going. It's not going to resize everything together. One side is going. To, but if you press your control key, if you press your control key and you drag, it's going to resize. It. Sorry, I was pressing my control. <laughs> Yeah, and I forgot. Okay. okay, you press your control key and you drag. You can see that is the same inch. I just put it in inches so that you see it's the same. Um, you can see that is so to keep the proportion on. Just press your control key and drag down. Okay. But I, I'm not. I don't want to drag, so I'm going to go back to undo. I want my big file. Then, if you want to export to, um, you want to export it. Inkscape exports as PNG. So you can also because I've not lined it, you can see some white marks here because I didn't line it properly. In um, when you take it to the web, it picks the color. You might find out that the lines are now black when you take them to the web. So to take um to if you are not taking yours to the web, if you are taking yours to the web, then you can just draw, draw a square over it. Let me use another different, a different color. And you go to object, lower to bottom, and it goes to the bottom. Then you can make the square. When you finish resizing the square, just drag to make it closer, or you can just put the input the size you want there and make it fit, okay? Then you can take, you can now fill the square with white. Just click on any of the co um, the color. Make sure that that particular square is uh, selected. If not, your whole work will go white. If you select uh, the color you selected. So now you click on white, and then you can now select everything together, both the square that you made that is now white, and this um your patchwork design. You can group them if you want to. But you will now go and go to file export and export as png 
However, if you don't want, if you want a, a border, you want to try a border and see if it's nice, you can see, just add it and see if you like it. So I'm going to do the border in another color so that it, it pops. Okay. So now you see we've added a border. You can decide how you want your border to be if you want it. And then you can decide to knit it as an eye cord or as a rib and stitch it with. Or hand knit with um, different lace edges or edges and um, can do some edging. You can crochet. It. Just do. You can use satin or cotton fabric to make a bias binding around it. That that's fine if you want to. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to delete that and just export only the blanket. I can come in later because I've saved it as SVG. I can come in later to adjust my work. I'll still have to save because you know I've done some alteration just now. But I'm, I'll just go to buy and save. Then it will save my work. So now I've activated the blanket, the patchwork design. I'm going to go to file, export PNG image. The menu pops up. If you say page, everything on this page is going to export. If you say drawing, it's going to be told. It's selection. You choose selection. And you can choose the DPI you want it to be. That's the dot per inch. If you are printing it for magazines or something, 300 DPI plus is what is recommended. Then if you are just going to print it on your computer or something, it is, it is alright or... Uh, from your printer at home, you just want to print and do your work. It is it's all right. Mm -hmm. but for the web, those 72 is recommended for the web, but you can make it 86 or so because you know, phones and computers they are now the technology has improved a little, so you can use that and the speed. So, here I have one before. Let me see if I Oh. <laughs> you see, I did see him here. See the green. <laughs> they followed. <laughs> okay. So I can still save it and I'll put this as two. Okay. And I'll click on save. That don't need to saved. I just put it into a file. And now you have to click export. If well, when you click export, you will see this um and put it here you will see the progress of your work being exported into the file you put it in so you see the progress and when it's finished so it's done so here's our work i'll just move this to the so here's our work we join you join me in the join me on on the knitting machine when we need this uh, blanket however don't forget that you can also print your work or you can decide to look it on the screen and design it i just put these two together so this is it on um, interactive knitting Now I just put it together. Let's see. Let me put this one on top. Okay. Oh, let me go to. Okay. So here's our work. This is. Those are the panels that we are meeting. We've turned it into panels, and you can see the square. We've turned each square is 120, and the panels 1,316. That's how your row counter will have to count and mix up of 11 squares. So now we finish designing our work from graphics. Now we're going to make it into reality by knitting it, the knitting machine. So see you on the knitting machine. Thanks. So we are ready to knit our blanket. We've designed it and it's time for us to knit our blanket. On my screen there, I'll just, we'll just zoom in closer. 
I've opened the this for the square. I've opened the instructions on interactive knitting. There we cast on left needle 43 to right needle 43. That's for each square. So to knit our blanket, we need sewing machine. You can see my sewing machine over there. It's ready. Okay, so we need um, a cast on comb. I need a cast on comb of the knitting machine. But first, we need the knitting machine. This is Brother 9 KH, sorry, Brother K, KH 950i. Although it's an electronic knitting machine, but we'll be using the manual, we're using it as a manual bed knitting machine. That's why I removed the cables. You can see the cable. Um, this is the plug for it. I removed it. We're not using it. We use some um, manual bed knitting machine. Um, you know, it's in the electronic part of it. So, let me show you this part first before we start. Okay. These are, um, these are the buttons for it for the electronic part and um, here you put your design on it. Um, let me see if I can. That's where you plug your design and it cable in. If you want to download and upload into the knitting machine, that's it and you need, all the, you need to use all those buttons too. But we are not using that part. That's why I'm closing it. We don't need that. As a flat bed knitting machine, so you can use any flat bed knitting machine of your choice as far as it can be stuck in it. <laughs> okay, we need, with that, we need a cast on comb to, to knit. You can use it with these connectors, but it's not necessary. You can use it with these connectors. It's, but it's not ne necessary. So that's it. Okay. We need our claw weights. No, we are knitting in panels. So I have about four claw weights. Let's see if I can get them all. Have about four claw weights. <laughs> Sorry. I have about four claw weights here. We need the master of the brother. Um, KH50, you can see the mast, okay? You have to connect it. The yarn rod and uh, every other thing that needs that. We need a um, transfer to when we want to cast off and um, beginning, we need to just move some stitches just to form an edge because I want to make a very tiny ribbed edge. Since I'll be using a weight yarn, I don't want to do an e wrap. I can do an e wrap, can do whatever you want. So I'm just putting some tools in case I drop my stitches, <laughs> like the lash tool or tapet tool, in case I drop my stitches. I'm gonna put those ones there. This is another transfer tool. It's not necessary because I've already, I already have this one here. So I don't need this one. This needle pusher, one by one needle pusher, and then that comes to the yarn. I'll be using this as waist yarn just to knit a few rows before I start knitting the blanket. I'm using four colors of yarn to knit the blanket, as I said, when we are designing. These are the four colors that I'll be using, and they are Robin Brand. And Robin is by Thomas B. Ramsday. They are 100% acrylic yarn. Double knit, yeah, double knit. Okay. This is purple, although in your in the screen resolution might be different, but this is purple. I think color 17. Then this apple green that I've been using from this. <laughs> uh, that's why that's small. They are all 100 grams. You need 10 of each color. That's about 14 yarns altogether. 
40 balls of yarn, 40. 100 grams, that's one, that's going to be 4 kg. All right, um, apple green, that's color 16. can't remember the color for this. <laughs> I'll put it on the blog later on or when I'm doing the instruction for the video. But this sunrise yellow and this uh, rose board. So our instruction says we should push needle for, for, um, I'm going to focus on the needle bed now so that we can start. We have to push left needle 43 to right needle 43. So I'll go to 43 here, that's 45, 43. And push it to right needle for C3. But because it's um okay, let me just leave it on 43 first, okay. Mm -hmm. And with my one by one needle push, I'm gonna push every alternate needle back. This is because I just want to cast on for my I want to knit my welt and I want to cast on, so I just want to push it back. I don't want to do an e-wrap. If you want to do an e-wrap, you can just start. But me, I don't want to do an e-wrap. I want to do a kind of um, tiny, very tiny, about four rows to form my welt, then do it. So I'm just going to push Uh-oh, what am I doing? Okay. Okay. Pushing it back one by one. Wait, go closer. So you can see one needle is in working hold position, the other one, one by one needle pusher. Sorry, the sun is coming in <laughs> from the other side. That's why it's casting shadows, but don't worry, we are right with it. Okay. So my yarn in my yarn feeder, I'm going to start knitting. I'll just knit with the few rows with the um and I'm using tension eight. I don't need to change my the row count now. I'll just put the yarn in the yarn feeder and I'll just put on tension. Okay, let me use tension seven first. Let's get closer to this. Just for beginners, I, I want to stress, uh, I just want to, so that they can see how we come, how we started. Okay, just my yarn in my yarn feeder. I'm not threading, just thread it in my yarn feeder and I'm going to make. And you can see that I'm using plain stocking net, even the just on NL. Plain stocking net, no buttons pushed. Oh. So I'm just going to knit one row first and hang my um, cast on comb. Don't know if you can see that. I think this is better. Just hang my cast on comb. You just try and put this one properly so that if you have a peg, you can buy. I don't have one. Just going to mix this one. Okay. I need about ten rows of. Um, I need about ten rows of. Um, with the waist yarn. More than 10. Okay. Now my carriage is on the right. If I want to use a ravel cord, I can use if I don't want to, I can just use but I think I'm gonna use a ravel cord for this. 
So I'm going to knit one more row to put the carriage on the left Then I'll use my ravel cord to knit from left to right and I'll start to um, I'll knit the rib okay. Now the carriage is on the left Normally I put my ravel cord, I got a ravel cord, sorry I didn't put in the first um, I do put my, wind it around um, a bobbin to prevent it from tangling because even if it tangles you have to lose it so to save my um to prevent my rubber cord from tangling i do wind it around the bobbin and when i finish i put it back onto the bobbin so you see just help me i use the contact one this is my hand to break the yarn so it's not so and I'll put my ravel cord. Let's get the camera closer. I'll put my ravel cord in the feeder and I'll knit one row from left to right. You know, the ravel, when I remove the ravel cord, the knit we separate from the. I'll just, you just put your ravel cord. You can watch previous video. You just put your ravel cord and the knit will separate from the um, waist yarn. Just knit it to one, okay? I will knit it. Carriage is on the right. We've removed our ravel cord. I'll show you just now, please. Just uh, bear with me a little. I'm the only one here, so I have to move the camera. Let's go closer so that you see the ravel cord. You can see the ravel cord. The pop, um, the lilac there. Okay. That's the ravel cord. So now it's time for us to start knitting. I'm starting with a purple. I just open my file here so that you can see it. On the screen, I'm starting with a purple. That's my chart. I made it bigger so that we can see. If you notice, I'm starting with the um, with the stripe, and it's purple green. As I say, your screen resolution might change, but it's purple. It might be giving you some of um, kind of blue, but it's purple green, rosebud pink, and the um, yellow, very light yellow. So I'm going to start with the purple, but I'll knit about four rows and in this one by one, and then pick it up to form um, to form a kind of tiny rib. I just want that edge on my blanket. It's very thin; you won't even notice if you don't look closely that there's an uh, uh, there's a rib edge there. I just want it there. Because on the cast of air, I don't want to do an ear wrap. If you want to do an ear wrap, that's up to you. So I want to make sure that my needles are still on um, 43. Okay, one I've reduced on this side. So I'll bring that one out. You count your needles. Make sure they are 43 for, to the left. Uh, it's on left needle 43 and right needle 43. You know when I did one by one needle pusher? One moved back. Oh. Yeah, one moved. Okay, no. Okay, yes, it moved back, so I'm bringing it back. I'm bringing it to um, working position to working position over there. Just make sure your needles are right. You don't want to lose one stitch because you're going to you're going to stitch them together. So we don't need this. We need our purple yarn. I just try the purple yarn. Normally, I take my yarn from the middle. Took lots of tech, uh, skills to be able to do that. I was always messing up my yarn. But um, if I mess it up, I'll just snip it. Oh, that. I do pick my yarn from the middle. So that the ball of yarn do not roll on the table. And here it is. Okay. Okay. So here's my ball. 
I don't pick it from the middle, just pull it out from the middle. But a lot of time you can you mess up your yarn until you before you are skilled <laughs> to remove it from the middle. But never mind, just some people do wind their yarn. When I do that, I can use any ball of yarn. I don't need to wind my yarn round any yarn. Um, don't need to rewind my yarn in, on a comb. I just use it from the ball. So I'm just threading my yarn. Okay. In the yarn feeder. And now, let's go to the... Um, and I'm going to go to the carriage and change my carriage because I'm using the right here now. I'm going to change the um, stitch dial to eight because that's what I'm. Although I'm doing a rib, I still want to change it to it. I don't. I don't want um, that rib to be snuggly. I want it to. I just want that edge, that um, tiny ribbed edge. So it's on eight. You can see it. And I'll knit one. I need about four rows. Pick my yarn, then change into, um, done. Turn my row counter to zero. One, two, piercing it, three, four. My carriage is at the right. You can see my carriage at the right there. Okay, so now we'll go closer because we want to pick our loop. It's just a, like I said, it's a tiny rib, very tiny, very teeny weeny rib, <laughs> just to create that edge. So let's see what we can. So my transfer tool, I'm using the one needle part of it. Going to pick it. Um, you know the needle in um. Okay, if you look at the needle bed here, you see that one one needle has been knitted on, and the other needle. We are going to hang the loops here on this other needle that is inside that's on non-working position. Then we'll bring it to working position and hang the loops on so that all the needles will be complete into no more loops before we need. You can watch previous videos on that, but I'm just going to hint on it. So that it is the first video you're watching. You know we're not doing magic. Okay, so pick our loops. I don't know if you can. I want the camera to pick it clearly so that you see what we're doing. Just going. We pick the loop. On top and the one under the um before the the purple one does this one I don't know if you can see is it that okay yeah that's it <laughs> okay we'll pick this one you know the one before the um after the rival cord and we pick this first one here and it's matching first one and we hang them on the needle in non-working position. So we are going to do that across, pick the one underneath and the one on top so that it forms a kind of tiny loop edge for us. If later on you want to thread something through like a, like an elastic, you have a very tiny edge there, but I don't think you'll be able to thread elastic. So you might need to make your loop bigger if you want to put an elastic, maybe you want to make it on a bed that is kind of um, snuggly. Call those um, bed sheets that they put elastic at the edge. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of fast with this. Just picking our loops.
Okay, let's go to this last one here. Let me show you. As usual, whenever I pick this last loop here, okay, whenever I pick this last one here, I do hang it on the two needles to secure it properly. Oh, I made a mistake, sorry. Whenever I pick this last one here, because that's the one, I hang it on the first and the second needle, because normally it's also be on the second to last needle. I pick it, I hang it on the first and second, and I extend it to this first needle here to secure it properly. So you can see it's ex um, stretching between two needles. I just do that to secure it. Okay. Then let me pick this end here, and then I'll do the other one off camera because we've done this before. We are trying to make a short video. <laughs> I know it's a tutorial, but we are still trying to make it short. Okay. Uh, all right. So for this one, I have to drag it in. For this one, we pick the loop. I don't think this one is okay. <laughs> we pick the loop first and hang we do the same we we'll hang it here and there's one loop here that this uh, cord is I don't think this part needed properly, but I'll just work on it and extend it to make it. There's one here. I don't know if you can see it. Oh. Okay. The iPod is hanging on it. You have to pick it and hang it. So I'll just hang it on this one. This is just another extra loop that may uh, formed when I didn't use to meet to the end properly. But that's no problem. So if you if you see I finished knit I finished picking my loops. When we need um, further, you will see it clearly. I finished picking the loops and I just hung the um claw weights on the um on the waist end. I hung the claw weight on the waist here. You can see it there. Okay. So the next thing is that you change the, your row counter to zero 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 because we, we're going to start to knit. We want to start knitting, and you can see my row counter is on zero zero zero. We have to start knitting now. Still with um, tension on eight. Your stitch dial on eight. Then we'll start uh, knitting. It's plain stocking it. The yarn is still in the yarn. Um, I'm still using the purple yarn. We're going to knit one hundred. No, sorry. I'm starting with the stripes. So, just want to remind myself again and to remind those of us watching that uh, I'm starting with the stripe. The first panel, you can see it's a stripe. So I'm going to start with the purple. Ten rows of the purple. Then I'll go ten rows of the green. Ten rows of the Rose pot pink and 10 rows of the um, yellow. Then we'll continue until we finish 120. We've knitted 120 rows of stripes. Then we'll go to uh, we'll take the next um, color sequence and we'll knit that block of 120 rows. So I'll knit 10 rows. Just tied. Yeah. 
Make sure your row counter knot is intact so that I can count the rows for you. Let's go. So I've knitted 10 rows of the purple. I need to knit 10 rows of the I've knitted 10 rows of the purple and I need to knit 10 rows of the green. So just snip change my yarn to green and I'll knit. After knitting this first stripe, just few rows of the stripe, I'll turn off the camera and I'll knit the others off. Until I complete 120 rows of the stripe, then I'll turn it on so that you see how far I've gone and we'll turn it in the other parts. So I've put on the green. I've put on the green. I'm going to put it in the yarn feeder as usual. Then I'll just hold the yarn at the bottom and knit one row first. When I finish knitting the one row, I'll tie it. I'll just put a knot here. Let me go closer so that you see it. I'll put a knot here. I just knitted one row. I'm going to put a knot and just try to secure this last stitch. If not, it will be very loose and I don't want that on my work. We can just knot it first just to secure it. Then later on you do whatever you want. I'll move my um, claw weight on my and I I'll put them on the blanket. This is to pro um to give more weight on my blanket and let the so that the stitches too can knit properly. You now we are knitting panels and it's going to be very long. Means we need we need something to weigh down for us. So knit ten rows. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. I need ten, ten rows. Oh, this one's give me look. Need to hang. Make sure I need to spot properly. This one. Okay. So I've knitted um, ten rows. That's the green. The next one is um the rose. Is it rosebud? Okay, rosebud. <laughs> Going to hang it, and uh, all right. Then, as soon as I finish this, I'll just snip it, just snip the green out, and I'm going to put the rose board. Put it in the yarn feeder. Now you can see. So I'll just turn the camera. Okay. We we'll put it in the yarn feeder, and I'll just hold the yarn at the bottom. You can see me holding it at the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. Well, <laughs> sorry, I didn't know you were missing. I think this camera needs to come down a little. Mm -hmm. Just too high. 
Okay. Okay, now. Okay, we'll put it in the yarn feeder. I'll hold the yarn at the bottom just to secure it. And when I get it, I'll just hold the green too. To make, so that the first stitch can meet properly. And I'll just meet across. I just knit across as usual I'll not put this into a knot to secure this stitch we want we'll... so we need need um, 10 rows of that of the rosebud I finished 10 rows of that. I'm gonna snip the snip it and then the next is the yellow. Get a small one. So I have the same as the yellow, just knitting, <laughs> and I'll tie the yarn here, I'll still knot it to secure the first, um, to secure it, just a little knot, just one is enough, then we can do the, we can wipe. We need 10 rows of yellow. of the yellow and you can see our blanket is coming up you can see the purple the green the rosebud and the yellow then we start again the sequence of the of the stripe we just take a look at our screen we start again the sequence of the stripe we'll do the second one and do the third one so we don't know how to knit the stripe once I finish the uh, I'll do the other one off camera then after once we finish the once I finish knitting the stripe, I'll put the camera on, then we'll start um, to knit the purple. You can see. The purple is next after the stripe. So we need the panel of the purple. I'll just put it on so that you see that part. We will start the purple. We see the same sequence. But just to complete the tutorial very well. <laughs> Okay, you can see how far we've gone now. The you can see we've I've knitted uh, 120 rows of um, the stripe. If you can see it, okay, that's 120 rows of the stripe. So the next one I'm going to do is to knit um, the purple. Okay, wind it down. <laughs> okay. So the next one we are going to knit is the purple. We're going to make the color block. As I said earlier, we we'll just take it to refresh our memory. The next is purple, and it's going to be 120 rows of that color. If I take um. Hmm. 
120 rows of that purple. I'll just go ahead first and uh, take it to design on it. So I'll just click my activate my design on it here. I've already opened it and I'll go to this uh, arrow. If you see, it's showing 120 rows and that's a square. So the purple will be 120 rows. We'll continue until we have our panel. I'll just go back and say select piece for the panel. We'll continue knitting 120 rows of each color until we can make a full panel which consists of 11 different blocks, that different squares. Or, um, 11 different squares that means our row counter we need to show 1316 and that's our panel and after we make 8 panels we will have to we will not have enough for our bed but that you can make as much panels as you want my, my size of bed is different on the way I want to lay my bed is different from the way you want to lay yours you know how to do the measurements and let's go so now I just get the purple and get ready for my color block and we'll start knitting just take the camera a bit backward so that you see the purple is in the yarn feeder now and I'll just knit now I'll need to knit 120 oh I move my row count mistakenly so that's one and I need to knit 120 rows. Although my rock hunter has been misbehaving recently, I need to check the knot under that um, the trigger, the rock hunter trigger. I have to check the knot under it. But sometimes it, it, it do not hit, uh, move. Just noticed it. <laughs> Just um, so this. I need to need 220 rows. That's one. on the peg. Eight. Sorry, I don't know, it's hooking on the peg here. I have to now nah, I'm having loops. But I've, oh, I'll make a note. I'll finish them off neatly later on. Just want to remove them. Let me move my okay. Just want to move my so. 
All right, so here we go. Oh, oh, wait, I'm coming. Let me move the camera back so that you see our blanket. So here we go. One hundred and twenty rows, and we have the next color is um, green. And so, until when we get to the end, before I cast off, I go off camera now, and I'll put on the camera when we get to the end of the panel before I cast off. So that you see it, they will go to the machine and piece our work together. I've already knitted the other part, so I'll show you them on the, uh, when we are piecing them. So I finished the green panel. I just want to show you how far I've gone. I finished the green panel. That's a purple and that's a stripe. I finished the green panel. I want to knit the um, rosebud. Before I knit the rosebud, I'll change my young yeah sorry my row counter to zero 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 because i want to know when i'm in 120 i know i need to stop so that i don't have to be adding which block i know each block is 120 so when i'm in 120 i stop change my yarn to zero 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 oh sorry my row counter to zero 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 change to the next yarn and start knitting so i just want to show you this uh, one Yan in yan feeder. I'm going to. Don't forget to move your claw weight up. And don't take your yarn too far that of the at the end of the carriage. Don't take your yarn too far so that it don't get hooked on the um, pegs and start forming loops because that happened when I was knitting. Took it too for the back. You don't need to use power to move your carriage, just move it. So we are on 52 now. now that 
that's what I'm gonna do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. 120. Let's go closer. So that is it. So fast. Knitting 120 rows. That's why I love machine knitting. Once you start, once you have a go of it, your project, you get, you have to, you complete your project quickly. Once you have that zeal to move and you zoom off, you have the strength, complete your project quickly. So here it is, 120 rows. I'll snip off, change to the next color, and then we'll start using the stripes part. So let me go with the yellow. Then I'll knit with it. Yarning mast, thread in yarn, yarning the yarn feeder. Change my carriage. As, as I said earlier, I love changing it. So that when I go to work, when I see that it's um, 120, I know it's time to stop. Not a good mathematician, so I don't want to be adding uh, one block plus the other. No, 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 no. I've done that before. <laughs> so let me just <laughs> go my way. Move your claw weight up. So that it helps you to weigh your knitting down. You can have one extra one here. Okay. And away we go. We start knitting. And we'll finish 120 rows. In no time. Too far, that's a look. Seven. <laughs> oh, it slipped. <laughs> so I'm going to go back, take my carriage to the other side. It slipped. So I'm going to put my carriage. My yarn is almost finished. Okay. Yeah, I re remove my young I remove my row counter back when I see. Alright. I've been needing a new yarn soon. So this yellow is almost finished. So that's 92. I want to change my yarn. Sorry, I want to add to my yarn. Just strands being strands left, so I'm gonna add to it and complete the 120 rows so that you see how fast. If you are knitting in squares, rectangles, no shaping, it's fast to work with. <laughs> Tie this one here. It's starting to lose some yarn out. Uh oh. <laughs> okay. 
All right, so off we go now. Just some twisted yarns, I'm trying to lose them so that um, they don't spoil my work. That's why a lot of people <laughs> love winding their yarn before they use it. I mean, I just use straight from the ball and I go through this dress. <laughs> okay. It's behaving. I need to turn I don't want. So I just leave this one off here. I don't want to skip. one in let's keep on it so it's 95 now 90 15. Need to move my swimming loops here, so I have to move my yarn. Sorry, my claw weight so that it helped me weigh that end stitch down. So also seeing I'm taking my uh, carriage too far the need to be. So one round seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. So there we go, we've done that. We've done it. Let's do a fast one now. Which colour is me? Oh, it's going to be striped. Mm right no okay yes that's true stripe we are back to stripe and we'll just continue like that Oh, I forgot to change my yarn. <laughs> I'm going to change the row counter so that I don't go and confuse myself. But you can continue like that if you're a good mathematician. You can continue like that. Okay, I'll just put 10 on it. So here we have 10. Next is um, a green. So let's take a look at our work. I've shown you how fast it is. And now we have to look. You can see the um you can see the work. Let me open it a little so that you see it properly.
this is um, the stripe and then the purple the green the rosebud and then the yellow so we're going to continue it's time to knit the stripe again I've knitted up 10 rows of purple and before you see if you do this let me say you know you'll be able to get a good blanket very soon so I put on the camera when we get it. I just want to show you how um, fast it is. When we finished. Uh, um, I've knitted. There's the last row. Let me get my floor weights off the knitting so that you see. I think we can go back forward with the camera a little. Okay. So you see this row one, this um, one, where we started, I can see the claw weight, two, three, four, five, five, six, the stripe six, this other one, seven, eight, nine, 10 and the stripe 11 and you remember 11 blocks make the R panel it's time for me to cast off so we'll take the camera closer I just do few stitches and then just trying to position the camera okay I'll take my yarn out of the yarn feeder and take the carriage off I don't need it I need enough space to do my work so I've taken my carriage off I'm going to cast off the first uh, first of all my usual cast off method I'll bring the uh, needle out wind it around the hook of the if you can see it it's a mix. I just want to make sure you see it. Okay. I think uh, taking it from the top would be better. Off, okay. Yeah, I think that is it. Then, all these are just floss from the yarn. You can see some floss from the yarn. After that, I'll clean my need needle bed. All right. Um, we'll take the hook from the. Okay, let's get a good, for beginners, <laughs> we need to get, make sure we get it right. Okay, all right. Okay, so we take the yarn, wind it around the mouth of the, the hook of the needle, the first uh, needle with the yarn, towards, um, we take the yarn, wind it around the hook of the needle, and we pull it through as if we are manually knitting. Then we take the stitch from the second needle. With our transfer tool, we take it into our transfer tool and transfer it into the stitch of the first needle. Uh, we transfer it to the hook of um, the first needle to meet the stitch of the first needle, and we take both stitches out of the first needle and take it into and move them to the second needle and move the first needle out of work position then you wind the yarn around the hook of the second needle which is now the first needle because you remove the first needle out of work position and you now manually knit that one so you've decreased one with as you manually knit you take the yarn from the second needle now, the new second needle. You move it to this first needle and you wind the yarn. Sorry, okay. Okay. 
and you wind the yarn okay you take it to the first needle you do both stitches and move both stitches from the first needle into the second needle and then you wind the yarn around the hook of the second needle and pull it through both stitches of the second needle while you move the first needle out of pos work position because we are decreasing the same you move the stitch from the second needle to the first needle the new first needle and you move both stitches onto the second needle you remove the first needle out of work position so that I do not confuse you you wind the stitch of the yarn around the hook of this new first needle and you manually knit it and you can see that our edge is forming we are forming a kind of crochet edge I'll just do another one and I'll do one very slow This gives you, gives you a nice crochet edge. So you can see our edge forming and that's how we cast off until we remove all stitches from the needle bed you move your yarn out okay sorry this one have two stitches now two or one okay one sorry we move the stitch from the i moved it sorry 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 not to confuse you okay we move this stitch from the second needle we move it into the first needle move both stitches from the first needle into the second needle and we move the first needle out of work position then we wind our yarn around the hook of the new first needle that's the one with both stitches now and we manually knit it so again, we take the stitch from the second needle, we move it into the first needle. The first needle has two stitches now. And we move both stitches from this first needle back to the second needle. And then we wind the yarn around the hook of this uh, new first needle and we manually knit it. So until then, we'll com I'll complete the other one off camera while we get to the needle bed where we'll knit all panels to get, uh, sorry, the sewing machine where we need all, we'll pin our work first together, match the squares. If you want to match them, match them together then we'll pin, that we'll pin our work and then we'll machine knit. Sorry. So I'll do the uh, I'll cast off of camera. So, uh, let me cast off as I'm talking. <laughs> so I'll do the many cast off of camera, and then we meet on the um, work surface, the table where we pin our blankets before we go to the sewing machine. Yeah, we will stitch the panels together to make our to finish off the blanket. And you know when we finish our blanket, if you want to add um, eye cord to it, you can stitch eye cord to it. 
you can make eye cord you cannot calculate if you watch the previous video of eye cord baby blanket you can see how many you to tell um you can see how we need an eye cord and how we calculate eye cord for the edge of um, a baby blanket so you can use that same technique and knit your own eye cord but this time instead of knit hanging your eye cord as you need this time you will have to stitch your eye cord to this finished blanket now you know how many the square does if you have after fin um, you decided that okay these are the panels i want to need you finish your blanket and you are happy with it if you want to edge it with um an eye cord or any you can now do that or you can use uh, you can crochet the edge you can use knit a rib and then stitch it to it You can even hand knit the edges. If you use a circular needle, you can do that. Pick up stitches, and uh, you can do all those ones. So let me stop here, and we'll meet on the and we'll meet on the work surface. But before I stop, let me show you can see now that I've cast it off some of the stitches and you can see how neat it is and okay this is the right the right side you can use any side as you desire you can this pole side can also look it can also look good as well as this right side so whatever side you desire for your blanket you can use it so let me continue cu cutting off of camera and we'll meet on the work surface so I'm almost through now let me just uh, finish this one up finish casting this then we'll go to the meat the sewing machine where we'll add we'll stitch them together the panels together to make our blanket and this is the last one we move the stitches to the needles back into the first and then i'll secure it since i finished that you know we still have two stitches on it um two stitches we've already we have one but to secure it i'll just take it a second time so to secure it i'll just take it a second time the um yarn around the hook of the needle and pull it out then i'll remove it from the knitting machine Taking a long tail of yarn, I cut this. So um, just pull it through. I think, uh, so here we have. Um, I've pulled. I just pulled it through. I don't know if it's the mist that is making it kind of blurry. It's my eyes okay so I've put it through to secure the yarn I still have a long tail here we've done those ones in let's go to the table the work um, working table where we uh, pin it up and then go to the knitting machine you can see the long panel and then go to the sewing machine we we'll finish with the knitting machine we don't need it anymore we we'll go to the sewing machine where we we'll add them together so I'm going to pin them. Oh, just stuck on the rug. <laughs> so this year we cast it on. Let it sort of go to the sewing machine table. So we finish. This is our panel. This is just one panel. I remove the cast on comb and the um 
and the Ravel cord. Twisted. Okay. Alright, okay. And if you use the rubber cord, you just pull the rubber cord, if there's no knot, it will come out. Just pull it. Be careful, you don't want to hurt your fingers. You can still cut your fingers, so be careful. Just pull it gently, and off out it comes. The waist yarn separates from the your um, garment, and you can see the tiny, just a little tiny border that I made, very tiny, just to give me an edge there. So now, I'm going to get the other panels that I've knitted and we'll stitch them, to, we'll pin them because we have to pin them. We'll pin them and here I have my pins, we'll pin them and then put the, let me get the panels. Okay. I've knitted some, this is another part of it. And here is the large one. <laughs> this is a very large one. I've knitted this. I've added them together. You can see how that I've stitched this together. So I'll put this one aside first. And I'll work with this other one. The smaller one. Make sure. Why did I edge? Is to make sure my cast on edge. And my all cast on edges should be on one side. So, I'm going to look for my cast on it on this side, okay? And according to the chart, the green is next. It's close to the um, purple. I'm going to line it up and pin so that when I'm sewing, I don't need to start searching. I know I've done my work well. This way, here this comes to play. So if you are going to stitch this together, okay, it's supposed to be like okay. You need a. We are going to pin this together, one edge to this other edge. You can look at the right side to make sure it's fine. Then you work on the wrong side. And line them up properly. So this is the right side. I'm just looking to make sure it's all right. Okay. Then you flip. You might have yarn on one side because of the um, because you might have yarn on one side. You might not have yarn on the other side. So what you do? You get your crochet hook. You make sure it lines properly. You pull one of the yarn through so that it secures both sides together and then you can just knot and tie them. This makes this helps in lining the uh, line it helps you to line the side um, the end of one block to the other of one panel to the other side and um, the end of the other block. On the other panel so it helps you to line your squares properly and you continue with that I can now come to the the bottom here which is the cast on side get my pins so here are my sewing pins I think I should use white so that I see properly. Okay. And then I'll pin it. Okay. 
You'll notice that I'm pinning them side and putting the pin vertically. It will help me in removing the pins easily. Uh, why it helps in stretching my not really like stretching, it just helps in preventing it from rolling. You know, I'm going to sew over it. So it's nice for it to be, be like a flat thing. That's why I'm, that's why I'm not pinning horizontally, I'm pinning vertically. So that it stretches it out for me and help me line it up properly. So we'll continue like that. All this yarn will done it in later on when we finish uh, sewing. We'll done then in into the work. So you continue, you just line your work properly. I'll open a little, then I'll do the other off camera. So that you see. although you can see them, um, that's a pins because it's pins. Then we'll go to the sewing machine. We'll you have to complete the panel, the full panel. I'll show you when I finish. You have to complete the full panel. You see that it's lining it up properly here, where we tied the yarn from one side to the other side. It's just to secure it. We can lose it later when we finish. It's just to secure it, to make sure this panel here and the end of this square lines properly with this panel here and the end of this square. So it lines probably that's where the change the change of color is we have to make sure the square the points meet that the points meet so when you put it you see that it lines properly and because we need a square we allow them to we need the squares and now you can see that i've not even stitched they already lined properly i'm not stretching my work i'm just uh, putting it the way it's supposed to be and it's lining properly. So I have to pin, put it in the, um, pin them before I go to the sewing machine. So that I won't have, um, I won't have one side longer than the other side. You have to pin so that your work can meet properly and your points meet properly. So I'll do the other, uh, do the end of camera. Then we'll go to the sewing. I'll show you when I finish pinning out one panel. Then we'll go to the sewing machine. So I'm talking, let me be pinning. <laughs> So we we'll go to the sewing machine, and then, sorry, and then we we'll go to the sewing machine and uh, stitch it. And so then we have our blanket. If you want to edge your blanket, that's fine. I'm not edging this one today. I'm making this for the uh, kids, and I want them; <laughs> they'll soon be back from school, so I won't have time to edge it. And it's snowing here heavily. Uh, I want to put it on the bed so that they lie on it and it provides warmth on the bed. That means um, it prevents the sheet from getting cold. I don't need to use a um, cutting bed sheet on the bed now. I'll put it and they'll lie on it and use a blanket, um, heavy duvet. Um, a woolly blanket too. Is it no? Sorry, four blanket to cover, and then they'll be very warm. So that's how I keep the bed warm. The sheet won't be cold because this this is what they lie on. This is what they do lie on, and uh, so I'm making this new one for the bed. See, for this one, you, I'm going to uh, put one side. You see, I've met it again. So I'm going to put with my crochet hook. <laughs> I'm going to pick one from. Make sure it lines properly. Don't just pick. For, um, don't just put your crochet hook anywhere. You make sure it lines. It's the end of the first where you want the want where you want them to meet. That's where you put the crochet hook. Okay, so that when you pull, when you pull the yarn from one of the sides to it, it's, it will line it up for you and then you can pin. It really saves work, it saves you lining and you see, that's perfect, right? So that's how I really, I lined it. 
before I wasn't bold lining. <laughs> I don't you uh, I wasn't I'm not that bold lining up because the points don't meet and so I just discovered this easy way and I'm surprised that I even lined the blanket up properly because I don't line up I don't I wasn't able to line up properly before what I normally do is do a drop um drop square or drop rectangle that means they don't line up one will be on the other half of it or so so i'm all right anyhow it goes <laughs> we just take it as a style but when you can line up that confidence <laughs> when you are able to do that you know like, okay that's fine can i line up and you won't believe this is the first um patch of blanket okay no I, this is this is the second one. Yeah, the first one I was able to do. That was when I discovered it. Then this is the second one. You put a line up. So I made it. The first one is bigger. The squares are bigger, larger. And this one, this one is smaller. I think that one is about 16 inches for those squares. Each square measures 16 inches. I think this one is about 10.5 inches for each square of us so, all right so that's it you continue in that you can see my pins you'll be using a lot of pins sorry i didn't say state that you'll be using a lot of pain on your work because you want it to stretch properly you don't want to give your sewing, you don't, you want to give your sewing, you just want to sew, you want the machine to just go easily. And easily. But if you can't sew with a sewing machine or you don't want um, to use a sewing machine, you can crochet it, you can um, darn it with a tapestry, needle and the yarn. You can do whatever you want to join your stitch. But for me, I'm going for sewing machine, I want to be fast. <laughs> I want to complete my project. Um, and that's why I got into machine eating. It helps me complete those projects that I do a bad one. <laughs> Although moving the carriage is still a bit of work, but it's still fast. Like ironing your clothes, you have to still move your. You have to move the iron. <laughs> And you have to know when to do the shaping. Let's continue this one a little. All right, so we'll meet it on the um, sewing machine. We we'll meet on the sewing machine where we we'll finish. Where we we'll start sewing it, and I'll be using our purple yarn. Let me show you. I'll show you when we get to the sewing machine. So we'll meet on the sewing machine where we'll start um, sewing this blanket. Already at the sewing machine, you can see my work now on the sewing machine. I'll use stitch 6 on the sewing machine. You can see just a back stitch. And, and I'll make sure the length of my stitches are not too long and not too short. It's just going to be just neat and tidy. Mm. So it's going to be between 0 0.5 to 1. And I'll make sure it's not too bulky. Just going to be a tiny. Just going to the regular stitch setting. Make sure that it's lining properly. 
the bottom and the top um, neat panels aligned properly so that it won't stitch one part and not stitch the other side. So here is the finished blanket. You can see how nicely it's laid on the bed. You can see it drooping at the ends. Because of the ladder at this other end, I didn't um I just tucked it in there. But that does not mean that it will not drop. So you see it?